Nashville, Tennessee has always been known as Music City. It's a beautiful and fascinating city full of talented and interesting people. And the bustling tourist community. But as the music industry shifted, so did the city. With country music becoming more based in pop and hip hop, the main drag of honky tonks became filled with those types of artists. I found myself curious as to where the real artists went. As I started exploring this topic more and getting to know the city and some of its people a little more, I discovered that there's a different side to Nashville. A side that doesn't come to life until night. Spots like Printer's Alley and Five Points. And that's where you have to go if you want to catch some of the most unique and interesting artists in the city. And one of those artists is Kim Logan. from florida yeah okay yep florida going back in a few days i'm, I'm really cold i miss it <laughs> <laughs> how long were you there before you came to nashville um i was 16 uh when i graduated high school and i turned 17 that summer and moved to new hampshire where i had some family living and then i went to berkeley for two years and i was in boston for two years and then i came here All right. a lot of new york in between there Never really living there, but squatting. <laughs> did you come here specifically because of music? Or? I did, yeah. Um, I came here because I didn't like Boston, but I also came here because my mom had worked in country music in the 90s, and country had always been very, very special and important to me. Um, and I knew that people still cared about records here, and um, I knew that I could study opera here, because when I was growing up doing opera, in Florida, we had a, an employee in common, a really amazing um, education director that went from Sarasota to Nashville Opera, so I knew that I'd have um, a studying position and eventually a job with Nashville Opera, and it just seemed like a perfect fit, and it really has been. I'm still in school. I take classes with Berkeley still, and i um, just trying to graduate someday, and uh, I'm close. I'm really close, but it's taken a while, but... I went to Berkeley campus for a couple years and um, I didn't like it as much just because Boston wasn't where I needed to be for my own art and once I got out of Boston and was able to still be at Berkeley online but be here or be on tour because I'm just bringing a laptop but just things are currently Listening there. to your record I hear a lot more Motown stuff in it than I think other people do. Yeah. Well people aren't looking for it anymore I don't think. I think people are looking for... Um, no, we're in the age of uh, lots of things being country, lots of things trying to be country, lots of things thinking they're country when they're not, um, and a lot of general like alternate names for it, like Americana, Kissassery, and pop country, and all that. And I think that's a, what a lot of the music industry is focused on: that and hip hop and rap. And everybody's forgotten about shit like this, and that's what I want to reverse. Right. You kind of walk anywhere on downtown Nashville and every bar has another blonde girl that's putting out a record that sounds like Taylor Swift. And yeah. it's no slight to them. If that's their hustle, that's fine with me. I don't... <clears throat> doesn't matter to me. Yeah, it's City, just like a it row just of looks bullshit. like the same, same record over and over again, which was kind of what made your record interesting to me because those Thanks. things weren't really at all present in it. I mean, you're country, but you're also at that point of country where... A lot of Nashville thinks that's too country now, which is weird. Yeah, well, I don't know. It's really... This is... You know, we might as well launch into this topic because it's it's <laughs> it's a hot-button issue right now because everybody does have a different opinion about it. And I mean, I'm not, I'm not one of those assholes that's going to go picking on white girls on Instagram with Southwestern print shit and, you know, saying that they're culturally appropriating artistic traditions and things like that. Like, 
live and let live in that regard as far as I'm concerned, but um, country music to me is very authentic and needs to come from an authentic place. Most music does to me, but country music especially because it was the music of the working man and the music of the people and the music of heavy shit like heartbreak and cheating and divorce and kids and the loss of kids and death and just all these really incredible human experiences that people wrote about and it got cheapened along the way and it got like polished and I don't think it ever should have been polished and there are a lot of good friends that I have in town who are making good real country music honest to god country music um, but for every one of them, there's ten of the other kind, and they're, you know, sitting in a fucking teepee in a field somewhere, pretending that they've had life experience when they haven't, or, you know, just writing, writing with these influences that, that aren't honest, or that don't come from somewhere that's true, and I think that's the only thing I'm really searching for anymore, is truth, because the only time I think that music is good is when it's honest. And even if you're, even if you're pop music, and if you're cheap music, if you're honest about what you are, right. that's you know, that's that's better than nothing. I I would rather listen to, you know, a Justin Timberlake record that is unabashed pop music, with his cool rhythm and blues influences, than I would listen to a disingenuous Americana record by some kid who, you know, started listening to Neil Young a year ago and has no <laughs> idea what the fuck they're talking about. There's so many people that are doing things but not really doing them and correct it, it, it. anyway back to justin timberlake yeah <laughs> quest loves a <his> drummer <laughs> i fucking love him i've lived in florida and tennessee the two places that he's really from and i feel like i understand him now yeah it makes sense and if you look look at where he grew up and like all the stuff he was involved with early on he yeah. kind of started really where he is now anyway he's seen a lot and he's done a lot and he's so multi-talented and um this is my love letter to you justin timberlake if you ever see this <laughs> no i think there's a lot of particularly here but more so, like here la and you'll run into it in, like new york occasionally but mostly here in la it seems to be like this girl's putting out a record but this four-year-old man wrote the record and There's she's that, huh? just the... Um, well, that just brings up another whole can of worms of gender in the music industry that I think informs a lot of what we all have to live by now. That after, you know, almost a hundred years of being an industry, the record business is still a completely misogynistic, male-dominated playing field. And it's wrong. And, you know, it's... It's 2014 and we have one of the biggest pop stars in the world suing her producer for rape. Right. And, you know, if that if that kind of shit is still going down, it goes all the way down, every level on the scale. It's happening at the smallest, smallest level. Every link in the chain all the way up, we ladies have to deal with it. And we're not touring as much. We're not playing festivals as much. Right. We're not paid as much. We, you know, we get roped into worse contracts and... I'm not gonna let that happen and I don't I don't care if it seems like I'm a bitch I don't care if it seems like I'm you know riding on this feminist wave and calling people out for their behavior but complacency is just as bad and you know there's just as many restrictions put on queer men as there are on any kind of woman and it's fucked up and I think that that is a cause that we can put ourselves toward as artists because we're the ones that the youth culture listens to and if we're not saying it nobody else is going to right and in this very you know changing landscape of the industry i think that one thing that can happen as the labels collapse and as the format changes and as you know as everything changes really if it's the wild west then why can't the artists you know speak out more than they have in the last 15 years about social issues and politics nobody's writing anything that means a goddamn thing anymore right. and people are starting to and i think that's why we're all excited yeah yeah i'm feeling it like, people spend a lot of time picking apart non-issues and ignoring real ones and... well yeah i mean god i sound like such a stoner conspiracy theorist but the you know the government's very involved in the music business and people don't talk about that either and you know they they'd probably love to use figureheads of of pop music and popular music um as 
you know, consumer role models, as political role models, as gendered role models. Taylor Swift is a perfect example. Oh, yeah. And, you know, that's being spoon fed to everybody, just like processed meat. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's the same kind of evil. And, um, I don't know. I've, I've wrestled with the music business for years and I've come upon the final fact, which is I'm just meant to fight that. Yeah. And in whatever way I can, I guess. That's why it's such a weird community here to be all friends and all artists and all songwriters, most most songwriters, and um, be able to go to somebody's show and kind of find out what's going on with them or find out how they secretly feel about something that they're not comfortable saying in a conversation. It's It makes for a very saturated and very, like, highly charged emotional and sexual environment to be in this, like, super saturated city, oh, yeah. in this super saturated neighborhood, um, having what I think is the closest thing to, like, a musical and cultural movement that we've had in a really long time. I mean, I, I would be very inclined to, to rank what's going on in East Nashville up there with Haight-Ashbury and Greenwich Village and, um, you know, other parts of Brooklyn in the 70s and uh, cool movements that... I don't know, the late 90s and pretty much all of the aughts were devoid of. We went a good 15 years without a movement, <laughs> and, right. and I think it's us now. Really. Whenever like things kind of get to a stale point, there's always something that happens underneath that that's trying to change that stale point, or at, yeah. least, at least pull its own audience, because its audience exists. It's helping me to realize that that's not what I'm doing, and it's this amazing thing that comes in from one side and informs what I'm trying to convey in my own right, but that I don't want to get swept up in because I don't think I'm ready yet. I'm still working on, you know, what I'm doing at this point. So right. I, um, it's the greatest lesson to be watching that happen to good, good people and good friends and learning how respectable it is, but learning that I have a different story to tell and that I need to be more involved with, you know, things with substance behind them and things with theatrics behind them that come from my opera background that you don't see, you know, country music has been tied to comedy and things like hee-haw, but it's never been a very flamboyant theatrical arena of performance and no. that's that's rock and roll and that's blues and soul and that's what Nashville used to have a lot of before everybody came became so hung up on the radio country versus non-radio country argument there was a lot of rock and roll and a lot of blues and a lot of soul and even jazz here just a few decades ago and for some reason that disappeared and i think unfortunately it's shit like country radio that drove it out of town because you can't hear good jazz music in nashville right now no. you can't it's i mean I think there's one place in printer's alley but fuck man it's nowhere and real blues isn't really even anywhere and I don't know. It makes me sound like I hate Nashville, and I love Nashville, but <laughs> no, I it just needs an, it needs a kick in the ass, right. and that's you know what I'm trying to do. I noticed that there really is like it's kind of just country music or some variation of country music mm -hmm. or a lot of cover bands. I but the thing is is that I know that all these other things are going on, like what you're doing, and uh, like my friend is in the Kenneth Bryan band, and mm -hmm. I mean, none of that's really happening here right now. No, and that's a bummer because it used to be and all the old cats who retired here were part of that and that's why they're all probably pretty ashamed right now. <laughs> but, you know, there's a lot of people here who appreciate it. I just think that they don't speak up enough and I think that what's saving us is the change of the model and the change of the format and if we can keep revolutionizing the music industry, we the artists, the lazy artists, unify a little more and keep revolutionizing the industry in our image then it's going to be fair and honest like we always wanted. And it's going to be, you know, we're going to have a lot more freedom if we really take charge right now because right. shit's a mess. Right. <laughs> Shit is a mess. <laughs> Small record labels, independent artists have so much more power than we think we do. And sometimes yes. I think there's a difference between a music lover and someone who's in the music business. And not everybody's in it for the right reasons, but when you find the music lovers, those are the ones like you who, right. you know, end up doing something important with their time and uh, I, I guess I just wish that more people here were given the perspective to be a fan of something right. and that's really why I like touring and coming back here because I get the perspective and then I get the the flood again the the, the intensity the rat race but um, I'm definitely gonna just go to the country someday and never come back <laughs> <laughs> I wish that people here admitted to um, 
other influences more. I wish people weren't so scared of modern music here because right. it's not all bad. It's really not. There's so much good and I think that when we fetishize the retro too much, we lose sight of a lot of other important things. And that's what I'm just trying not to get sucked up in because that's kind of what the music industry favors now is these very like uh, kitschy waves, these niche markets that come and go. And I just wish that people would encompass everything still. Like Bonnie yeah. Raitt was everything. She was a reflection of everything that was going on then and before. Right. I was with it. I came here at a very interesting time, but I'm really glad I did. I think I was meant to. And um, yeah, it's been really fun watching Nashville grow and growing with it. And it's it still does care about records. And you know. I kind of followed Jack White here a little, too. <laughs> yeah, the work ethic is a huge thing for me. It's why I like him so much, and it's why I like Lady Gaga so much. I've, I'm a total workaholic, and I get it from my parents, and, and I, I get it from being a student for so long, but I just, I'm not happy unless I'm working and creating and um, making some sort of forward motion. It's like that um, Woody Allen line where he's like, comparing his relationship to a shark and that sharks die if they stop and right. I feel like that I will I will die if I stop I don't know. <laughs> well there's because of the internet now everyone's for to be frank about it, they're all fucking lazy yeah well. they don't they think well I posted this thing on Facebook and I posted this thing on Twitter and there's a video on YouTube my work is done here yeah and like well some people have the fire under their asses and some people don't right yeah.